Welcome, welcome to the lighthouse. Nice to have everybody here. Obviously, good news for my son. We keep on getting good news every single day. Very fortunate for everybody's prayers. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Is the hearing good? Hearing good? Hear Moshe in the online world? Good? Perfect. So today we have a great class. Today I'm going to talk about four to five strategies on how to get stuck in any situation. Rabbi Nachman's Torahs are very, very practical. They're very deep, but they're also very, very practical. We're going to talk about five methods today on how to change, how to change your state instead of living in these, obviously, the negativity that we're dealing with today. So specifically now, we have to be sharper than we've ever been before because the amount of negativity out there is just tremendous. And it's very easy to get caught up in it. Very, very easy. And if we're not sharper, what happens is the evil inclination gets us and he knocks off our days. Days become months, days become years, etc. So today I want to talk about literally four to five methods, phenomenal methods that I personally use on how to get out of any state. You can't avoid, you can't avoid the negativity in life, but what you can do is you can use it as a signal to change. The purpose of a negative emotion, very simple, is an action signal to move, to change. That's the whole point. An emotion, the purpose of an emotion is to change. It's not to live there. The problem is when we stay in these states and we accumulate negativity and then it turns into other things. That's the whole point. Re remember, purpose of an emotion is to move. It's not to stay there. We have to understand that negative emotions are very simple. They're only action signals. They're telling you to change something. Either to change what you're doing or what you're focusing on instead of living there. Rabbi Nachman says something very beautiful in Lesson 233, which is very eye-opening. He's saying that a person is going to get sent thoughts from above. And his, his reward is overcoming those thoughts. So I think today we get very bothered. Oh my God, why am I thinking so negative? Why am I thinking like this? Something's wrong with me. You have it all wrong. You get those, set, those thoughts sent to you from above. Your job is to overcome them. If you overcome them, what happens is you get a great reward in life. That's what Rabbi Nachman tells us here. In ancient amphitheaters, monarchs used to stage battles between wild beasts and prey. The same is just like you see a, you, know, you see a bull and a guy fighting. It's the same thing that's happening in your mind. These are the same battles that a person's going through with his, with his own mind. When a person's able to overcome these battles and has the proper strategy, he gets great pleasure from above. So remember, don't, be, don't focus on the negativity, focus on what's next. What do I do with this negativity? What is it telling me to do? For example, if you just look at pr practical emotions, let's like for example, if a person feels uncomfortable, there's a reason why you feel uncomfortable. It's teaching you to change your state. If a person feels fear, it's teaching you that you're, you're too obsessed with control. You want to control the situation. You want too much certainty in life. So what happens is the more certainty we want in life, the, le the less we get it. Because that's the whole purpose of faith in this world. For example, if a person's hurt, it's an, expe it's an expectation. He, has an, he had an expectation that wasn't met. It's always something. It's not to just sit there and, and with these negative emotions. For example, if a person's angry, it's a sign that he's had, either he got violated or he lost control in the situation. What happens is we lose control, we get angry. You trip on a chair, you get angry. You hit a parked car, you get angry. Somebody says something, you didn't expect, you get angry. So anger is loss of control. We're gonna talk about that concept. Disappointment, a person has this walks around disappointment. What happens? You had an expectation that wasn't fulfilled. You thought you were gonna make this money, it didn't happen, so you walk around upset. Guilt, you violated your own standards. A person feels guilty, you violated his own standards. So remember, you notice it and then you wanna change it. That's the whole point here. You feel overloaded, a person feels overwhelmed, people say I'm depressed, I'm overloaded, I'm overwhelmed. It teaches you you have to do one thing, one thing at a time. Loneliness, you need connection. So these are just 10 practical emotions that we speak about. Now these, the whole point of these emotions are telling you to change procedure or to change perspective. It's not to live in these things. This is a very, very important sp message spiritually. Because Rabbi Nachman tells us very clearly that you're always going to have a, si a different situation in your life. There's always going to be a different situation. There's going to be times where you're going to be battling with your self-esteem. There's going to be times that you're battling, you're doing great. 
and you just, you're not just watching what you're thinking about. There's times that you're going to have to completely surrender to God because your mind's not even working. There's times that all your life you're going to have to connect to Him one way or the other. And we're going to talk about what to do in these specific situations. Let's get to the root of the chaos. What is the root of the chaos? Let's get to get to the root of the chaos. Why is a person going through chaos? Why is the world going through such a chaotic world? The Nakhon tells it to us in very black and white in less than 82. The Nakhon says that the world started, Adam and Eve started, Adam represented order. As you see, Adam represents the, the, the letters in order, right? Aleph, Dalai, Mem, even in English, that's a numerical value of 45, Adam. Chava came to the world, she represented disorder. This is the root of all disorder. The main problem of Chava was pride, ego, control. I want to rule. That's the root. Adam and Eve are two states of being, two states of consciousness for you and me. Either you're in a state of Adam, order, or you're in a state of disorder. Adam represents the, numer Adam represents the numerical value of God's name, Ma, which is 45. Chava represents the, the opposite. Chava's name is disorder. Even the letters are not in order. Her, her, her name represents 19. So practically, in our lives, when the 45 and the 19, if the 26 is missing from the picture, this is the root of all disorder in life. This is the root cause of every single problem that we, we face. It's a state of control. Today, everybody's very controlling. They want to control, they want certainty, they want things to be their way. And talk about examples of that. So you, you should understand, the job of the ego is to edge God out. Chava wanted to do just that thing. She wanted to edge God out and seek control. So what happens, the more you seek control in life, the more your life will be in disorder. Remember that clearly. The more you want to control, the less likely you will control. The more impatient you're going to be in life, the more things are not going to go your way. So why? Because it's the ego running the show. When the ego runs the show, it's nothing but chaos. Chaos, chaos, chaos. And Rabbi Nachman tells us, when you go out to war, when you go out to war in life, he gives us this concept called the makshava. The makshava is the thought. You have to return to chashu ma. Chashu, return to ma. Meditate on ma. Meditate on the soul instead of the ego. So you have to practically look. I'm going to give you guys examples. For example, a person having an expectation. Where does an expectation come from? Ego. Appreciation is the soul. So let's say a person starts praying, he doesn't get answered. What happens? He becomes, he becomes upset. How come God didn't answer my prayer? So you see that person wants to control the, even the prayer. Key in life is you have to pray and let go. You have to do something and let go. You have to go to work and let go. You have to do your hishadlut and let go. Heart, the heart of the job is really to let go. Most people do the job, but the problem is they don't want to just let go. The letting go is the problem. They don't like to surrender, they don't like to let go. They like to control everything. Control. The more you control, the more your life is out of control. That's the root. And the only reason why we control in the first place is because we have fear. Fear causes control. Control causes anger. Anger turns into depression. Depression turns into isolation, and there's a history. But the root cause is control. And this is where Rav Nachman tells us very simple, that when you see your life is chaotic, and you see things are going upside down, every area of your life is going upside down, you should know there's, a, there's, an, there's an area there that you have gava. You have a form of arrogance. Very hard to tell that to somebody. Oh, by the way, your life is upside down because you're, you're arrogant. Very hard to say that, obviously they're already they're already trying to control everything. You tell them that, they're, they're, they're going to even make things worse. But you have to understand what the root of it is. The good thing about this is you have to catch yourself. Makshava thought is chashuv ma, return to ma. Return to what? For example, let's say I'm walking around with an expectation and it doesn't get hit. So I'm going to walk around with a chip on my shoulder. I'm walking around upset. My mood's not the best. How do I get out of that state? Return to ma. Turn that expectation into appreciation. 
You understand? Right away, you can just shift your consciousness from expectation to appreciation. Expectations from the ego. Appreciation is the soul. See the difference? Your soul level has gratitude. Your ego level is always injustice and never getting the right thing. Again, too much controlling. And this is one of the worst things that people, unfortunately, are trying to control everything. They want everything certain. They don't like when things go their way. And because of this, all this fear is just create, causing tremendous chaos in the world. So Rabbi Nachman says, when you see things are going upside down, when you think, see things are going unorderly, it's a person should know that he's not bound by God. He's been separated from God and his ego is running the show. Remember, what does the ego do? The ego wants to always look good. The soul wants to do what is good. But the ego will always blame somebody. The ego will always want to show strength. The soul knows what it has to be doing. It has to do. And Rabbi Nachman saying, this is the concept of Koachma. Chachma, real Chachma, which is, which is wisdom, is being able to connect your wisdom to Ma. Recognizing that everything from God is from Ma. If you ever want to be saved in life, you have to connect to Ma. So what you do is when you see things are chaotic, for example, let's say you, you're angry. This person who's angry, it's a sign that he's been arrogant. Right away, how do you fix the anger problem? <coughs> anger is the ego. How do you fix that? You, work, you, you turn the anger into mercy. That you go back to Ma. Person seeking control. Instead of seeking control, give control to God. The more you control, the less you're gonna, things are going to go your way. Taking things personally. Many times, unfortunately, we say we take a lot of things personally, correct? Because, because why, do, why does somebody take something personally? Because we become very self-centered. We make everything about us. Again, self-centered. The more self-centered, the less I have God-centered. <laughs> That's how it works. See what I'm saying? Everything is ma. This is the root of the chaos in a person's life. A person having lack of patience. Again, where does, where does patience come from? Okay, lack of patience is coming from an expectation. This is all rooted in chaos. Or, for example, a person blaming others for a, for a situation. Ego-based. The root of the ego is when you separate yourself from God. Like Rabbi Nachman saying here. He's saying that the word Gava. Gava means arrogance. God's name is Yud K Vav K. Correct? The first Yud K, you can't control that. That's Chafma and Bina in Kabbalistic literature. We can control the, the last Vav, which is our emotions, and the last He represents our Malchut, represents our faith and speech. But the first Yud He does not Yud He does not belong to the person. The first Yud He is a numerical value of fifteen. Fifteen is the numerical value of Gava, arrogance. So when a person tries to control things, when a person tries to, he wants things his way, he's demanding, he's, he, he's impatient, this is the root of the chaos in your life. Because what happens is you edge God out. And Rabbi Nachman tells us the only solution is to go back to humility, go back to Ma, go back to Adam. How do you go back to Adam? Remember, the 45 represents God's name of Ma, humility. 19 represents disorder. So what you have to do is, you have to take that 26. 26 is God's name. When you put the 26 back into the picture by humbling yourself, you go back to order. God's in your life, you draw godliness, the ego is not engaged anymore, the soul is engaged, and things go back to order. But when the ego is engaged, the 19, which represents Chava, which represents control, which represents I Ani Yimloch. The word Ani Yimloch means I will rule. I will rule. You ever meet people that it's my way or the highway? Guaranteed chaos from the person. The more the more you want to rule, the less likely your creator is going to be in your life. This is the reason why we go to the mikvah. The reason why we go to the mikvah, men and women, is to humble yourself. When you're in the mikvah, you're in water. You have nothing. One of the best meditations to go to the mikvah is to connect to this name of Ma, which this name of Ma is a name of complete, complete, complete surrender. 
That's the name. So practically, you have to ask yourself, is my dating life out of order? Why is that out of order? Maybe I'm too picky. Maybe I'm too particular what I want. Maybe I'm not open-minded. Maybe I should look for, in order to, instead of looking to, get, to go into a relationship to take, maybe I should go into a relationship to give. So a practical example would be dating. Go to a relationship to give. Don't go to a relationship to take. When you go to take, you're in your ego state. You're not in your soul state. You understand? Everybody, imagine a person waking up, Hashem, I'll find me a soulmate that I can give to. What, what does he do? What can he do for me? How does he? <laughs> it's the opposite. You become very self-centered. You have to catch yourself. This is the root of the issue. All anxiety and, and, and impatience is because you don't like things the way they're going. And the more you get, in, the more impatient you become, the more disorder you have. And the more chaos begins. Because remember, first it starts from nervousness, then it becomes anger, then it becomes blaming that person for your problems. And here we go, we get into tremendous chaos in our life. This is the root of all chaos, is when your person is in, it separates himself from God and he says, I want to rule. Why do you think people in, in recovery, are, are, are in addictions, are struggling so much? It's because they want to control how they think. What does the substance do? It makes you control how you think. That's control too. It's very arrogant. You understand? Everybody doesn't want to deal with uncertainty. I want to control the way I think. I want to control this. I want to control my prayer. I want to control what time I get. Everything's control. You see, the more we control, where's God in the picture? Where's God? Where's God in the picture? Remember, we're here to crown Him, not crown ourselves. To the extent that we crown ourselves, there's disorder in your life. Nothing but chaos in your life. And then one thing starts after, and then another thing starts after. And you see people, unfortunately, they don't, they don't get that hint. It's very hard, to be honest with you. It's not easy to be when you, when you see, see this. But this is why the word Yud, which represents Chokmah, first Yud, if you turn the Yud around and you take it the opposite, that same Yud represents Davoi. Davoi means sick. You take the Yud, instead of Yud being for you, it becomes opposite. It becomes Davoi. Davoi means sick. So think about in our lives, expectations, impatience, control, anger, blaming others, going to a place for self-gratification. Think about it in our lives where, where we've had nothing but chaos in our lives. This is where it is. This is the root. And the only way to fix this, we're not saying, if you see that your life is chaotic, when a person sees that, it's, that things are not going for him as planned, he should know that he possesses a concept of, I will rule. Control, what he should do, is he should meditate and go back to humbleness. In life, if you don't humble yourself, somebody will humble you. It's pretty much how it goes. You can humble yourself, or you will be humbled. Pretty much. That's how pretty much, unfortunately, it goes. If we humble ourselves, we don't have to be humbled. But think about a person living life saying, this one hurt me, that one hurt me, this one hurt me, that one hurt me, that one hurt me. Everybody hurt, hurt me. They become too much of a, God forbid, they get too much of a victim. That person is in chaos because he's not godly centered, he's become self centered. It's all about him. So that person has no room for growth or no room for God. Because the more we make room, the less room we have for our Creator. And this is one of the meditations you should do. Meditate on Ma, Makshava. Think about the word Makshava. In Hebrew, means a thought. Anytime you say chaotic, time out. Take a time out. <laughs> You ever see a game where the team's getting blown out? Yeah. I'm sure New York Knicks fans know all about blowouts and stuff like that. But when teams are getting blown out, they call a timeout. In life, when you're getting blown out, you don't have to continue being on the hamster on the wheel. You have to stop. If you see business completely chaotic, think about maybe I'm trying to control too much. Maybe I'm lacking trust. Maybe I don't want to let my, God, my creator in. Maybe I'm trying to over control, control, control. In life, what Nachman tells us is very simple. You have to pray to make money, but you have to also pray to let go. Imagine that. Very hard. People 
People are very ambitious to make money, but they're very, very hard. They don't want to let go. They don't want to let God make the blessing. Even how many paid people do we know? They started praying, they stopped, they stopped praying. Or they stopped spirituality. <clears throat> Why? They started, things didn't go fast enough for them. No, it didn't work. How many people tell you it didn't work? Things didn't work. Because what happens is when you pray and you control it, not only does it not work for you, it goes against you. As our sages say, when a person prays with an expectation, his prayer is not only not answered, but his prayer is actually observed and audited. Who are you to, to, to want things so fast as this? So you don't want to get audited in life. You don't want to get into an audit. You want to always be the guy, grateful, praying, but most important thing is you have to make sure to get out of your Creator's way. Because there's a lot of blessing out there, but the problem is we're in the way. The blessing doesn't come to us because we're in a state of chava, we're in a state of disorder, we're in a state of impatience, we're in a state of control, we're in a state of anxiety. All of these states, worry, all of these states are very, very, very egotistical states because they're all focused on controlling your Creator instead of letting go and letting God. You understand? So when you know if you have a major anxiety, you should know you're trying to have, look for too much certainty. You look for too, you're, looking for, you're living in a world looking for too much certainty. It's not going to be there. You want certainty in life? Like one thing you're going to have is uncertainty. That's a guarantee. But the more certainty you look for, the more uncertain things are going to be, and the more mentally burnt out you're going to be because you're looking for certainty when there's no certainty in this world. And this is what your whole, your whole job is, to look for your Creator in everything. But to the extent that we block that, that light, is the problem. And this is exactly what Moshe Rabbeinu represented. Moshe Rabbeinu represented this concept of Ma. He represented this, who am I? What, I, what am I? Who am I? Mahayenu. And what I do every day is I, I, sing, I say, Creator of the world, let my expectations become my appreciations. Please help me not control things. Please help me let your blessing come to me. Let me not stand in the way of the blessing. It's unlimited. I don't need to control my Creator's blessing. He's going to give it to me when He's going to give it to me. And when He's not going to give it to me, believe me, I learned the hard way. But when you get angry, and when you get turned into these negative states, it's only the ego. And remember, what is anger really? It's you're showing you powerful. <clears throat> and this is why, you know, a person gets angry, he loses money. A person gets angry, he ends up apologizing. He ends up in a worse, worse state than ever. It's because we lose control, but you're not supposed to be in control in the first place. That's the whole problem. You need to understand that. And so you have a God, and a higher power. But the more you want to control, the more you can guarantee that it's going to be chaos. So Rabbi Nachman says it's very simple. So you should know, this, and he takes, the, he takes the Pasuk from, when you go out to war against your enemies, and God, your Lord, delivers them into your hands, and you take some of them captive. And when he's saying here, when you go out to war, when things don't, are not going as planned, what happens is, is because you're, you're going against your Creator's will. And this is where you really have to look inside, whether in business, relationships, Shalom Bayit. This is some relationships in Shalom Bayit. People that are always demanding on people. I need more respect all the time. I need this, I need that, I need this. Of course you should give respect. But how much, how much, if a person is willing to, to give in to an argument, and he's willing to, to give up his kabot for the sake of peace, that's a soul decision. An ego decision is, you apologize, I'm not talking to you. It's, very, it's an egotistical decision. And that's the root of all chaos, is when we want to control. Or, for example, somebody does something to us, what do we do? Emotional sabotage, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. Again, these are forms of ego. Instead of saying, talking it out and f looking for the sake of peace, we're looking for too much control, power, and we, in the more, really, if you understand, really, in life, that the more power you want in life, it's, that's how much farther away you are from Hashem. Because when you recognize the more power you want, how much more you're pushing the blessing away from yourself. That's what people don't understand. They're looking for more power, and they don't realize they're only creating more shadows and the blessing from above. And this is why it's so important that when things, go, when things are chaotic in life, the first thing you want to say is, Hashem, I've created disorder. 
Rav Nathan has his 50th, 50th gate. This is a prayer that I say. And he says, my arrogance, my pride has, has, has put me in this position. Please, I want to go back to order. I want to put the 26 back in my life. I don't want to live in this order. I want to put the 26 back in your rich. When you pray like that, you're praying with humility and it changes. Or another way, how many people say, or asking for people to change? I want that person to change. Again, arrogant. Hashem puts you with specific difficult people in your life for a reason. Believe me, there's difficult, everybody has difficult people in, her, in your life and He puts them there for a reason in order for you to change yourself and in order for you to get mercy. When you're trying to demand to, to change a person too much, it's also a sign that your perspective is not, you mean you have, you're 100% correct the way you're viewing it? It's time for you also to change your perspective. That is a humble. Instead of saying, creator of the world, change this person, you should say, creator of the world, how can I see good points in that person that I don't see? Maybe I'm not looking at it right. Maybe I'm projecting my own faults. Imagine how many times we project our problems. So now you know where the root of the chaos in your life is. And this, remember, this is the picky syndrome dating. This is the picky syndrome, I hate to say it. Picky, picky. Going into a relationship only for lust, not for love. What I can get out of it. This is guaranteed going to go be chaotic. You want a guaranteed for the relationship to go bad? Just go for what you can get out of it. And you'll see. Your expectations will turn into resentment. How many times did we hear that? But if you go to give, what do you think is going to bless that relationship? Your Creator. Always ask, what can I give? doesn't need to be a doormat and become validated too much, but you always have to know that you're going there to give. So that's the number one tool. <clears throat> Chaos means arrogance. Solution is humility. Put your Creator back in the picture, put the 26 back in the picture. Remember the 26 is the name of Mercy, 26 is your kebab ke. When you put that 26 back, that 26 turns into 45. You no longer have the control issue of 19, and things will go back in order. This is the number one thing I do when things are chaotic, when I have days where I see that I'm not focused, I go back to Ma. I meditate on Ma, I put the 45, and I say, next. We don't want to, we don't want to also stay in too much guilt. How can I? Feel? No, that's it. You made a mistake. You got unfocused that day. Broken focus. And broken focus. Go back. That same morning is the day that I go back and I meditate on Ma. And I think about the expectations. I turn them into appreciations. I talk about the areas I tried to control. But sometimes I got nervous. Or if I had a fear of something. That's the time where you reflect. And you really, really, you'll see the difference. Because you'll see a tremendous amount of weight being lifted when you go into the state. Because ma means nothing. Stress is accumulation. All stress is an accumulation of pressures. But why do I need pressure if I'm holding on? I'm only, I'm only, I only have tremendous pressure if I'm trying to hold on to everything. But when you let it go, the pressure's gone, you feel better, you refocus, etc. That's the first one I strongly recommend. It's called Koach Ma, which is Chokma, Makshava, Put that name Ma in your head. It's the number one game changer. Where do you get it from? Ma? Lesson 82. Like what is that? Ma is God's name. It's a God's name of Ma. Memhe. 45. We say this every single time before we pray. Before we pray in the Siddur, there's a passage that says, Ma Hayenu, Ma Kareen. Who are we to even sit here and pray before you? Because what we want to do is before you get to prayer, you want to get to a state of tremendous humility. So when you get to prayer, you're able to have that, the fact that you're answering my prayer is a gift. Not that, I pray, what's going on? Where's the email? What's happening? This is why, 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 why in the world would a, would a person stop praying? It's because of his expectations. He got burnt out. Prayer is supposed to give you energy, not burn you out. And if you're praying and you're getting exhausted and you're burnt out, that means you're praying and you're watching the scoreboard. You're watching the scoreboard, and you're not going to be the one changing the scoreboard by watching it. Your Creator changes the scoreboard, not you. And this is what the most important thing when people have very, very low, and I hate to say it, I hate to say it, people have a very low stamina in life. Very, very low stamina. It's a very weak, 
with people because everything's an expectation. Everything's I feel I can do this, what am I getting out of it? I'm doing this, what am I getting out of it? Everything's hey, 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 hey. Can't you just do something just from your heart? Why does everything have to have a present and expectation? It's not a video game. It's not a video game. It's more when you get to an area in life where you connect to the right place, you get everything. But the more you look at it as a video game, spirituality is a video game. If I press this, I get this money. If I press that, I get married. It's too much of a video game. That's the problem. It turns into a video game, and, and this is how people view it in their own heads. And what happens is they get nothing at the end because the expectation is the problem. It's the control. It's not what you're doing. If you just did the same thing and you completely backed away, believe me, I learned this, press, I learned this lesson the hard, the hard way. If you just do what you have to do and you back away, you'll see the blessings come to you because you have to make room for your Creator. <coughs> you make room. Where is the room for your Creator? If you're trying to control it. That is one of the issues. This is why the Gemara says, the Gemara says, person that prays with expectations, he's going to have a, he's going to have a long heartache. He's going to be full of heart. What do you mean? I just prayed I'm going to have, a, I'm going to have pain in my heart? Does that make any sense? Why would I have pain in my heart after I pray? It's because the expectation is what causes that. Very, very important. When you get into a relationship, expect nothing. Go in there to give, and you'll see you get everything out. Because remember, like we said before many times, in life, if you want to feel, if you want to get abundance, you have to be in an abundant state. If you want joy in your life, you have to feel joy. Whatever you want, you have to already feel that feeling before. It doesn't. It's not something you chase. It's not something you chase. It's something you practice. When you practice it, you get it. You chase it, you usually don't get it. Something that we need to understand. That's number one. That's Koach Ma. It's probably the most important one. Second one. Feeling overwhelmed. Being a perfectionist. Lack of self-esteem. Low confidence. Etc. What do we do with those states? Because remember, insanity in life is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. By the way. That's insanity. Doing exactly the same thing and expecting something else to change. Complete insanity, just understand that. There's a reason why you feel like that. Anytime a person, God forbid, is sick, or he feels doesn't feel right, it's, it's, it's a blockage of energy. If I feel 100% perfect, I feel 100% good, energy flows through my life, through my body. But once there's blockages, it's because energy is stored, or accumulated there. You understand? That energy is blocking God's energy. Cholel, cholel means sick, means halal, missing light. So any everybody in that area is because we're missing light in that area of our lives. So for example, a zamra. Anytime you have a problem with low self-esteem, low confidence, or you're perfectionist, you feel overwhelmed, what should you do in those states? Those are not times to become more perfectionist. It's not the time to, to lose yourself. When people have unfortunately low self-esteem, people they, they escape from reality, they escape from themselves. What do you do? There was a time that Rav Nelson had a beautiful story that there was a guy who had, he was traveling around and he saw a particular individual, his house completely burnt down. And all of a sudden he was picking up the pieces. So the, the Nelson's disciple said to him, well, look at this guy, his house just burnt down and this guy's trying to save a couple of, uh, trying to save a picture frame? What is he doing? He's wasting his time. He says, no, no, you're very, you're very confused. This is exactly what you need to do. There's going to be a time in your life that your house is going to burn down, God forbid. Not your house, but your, your whole world is going to crash down. Where everything's going to be completely, you're not going to see anything clear. That's the time where you have to practice a zama. It means I will sing. You have to pick up one piece at a time. A zama means to pick up the pieces. Sing with what you got. You're exhausted. Nothing's going for you. Do one thing. The problem is when people can become overwhelmed, they shut down completely. They just shut down completely exactly what's happening in Egypt that we're mimicking every single day. Kotze Ruach, when a person has deep emotional issues, what happens is he doesn't listen to Moshe, he doesn't listen to the dot. So right now you don't have the Kaili, you don't have the vessel for this tremendous darkness. So what should you do? You have to pick up the pieces by doing one thing. The most important thing when a person is stuck in a, in a low self-esteem or nothing is going right, and you completely this is already when you're already past the control issue, where you already called it, that's it, I'm done, I'm overwhelmed, I don't know what to do. You have to start with a zamra. A zamra means I will sing. I will sing with what? With whatever I got. 
This is exactly when the Jews sinned with the golden calf. What did they say? We're black, but we're beautiful. We're blackened with sin. We're blackened with sin, but we're still beautiful. So even if a person goes into a very dark place, he sins, God forbid, or whatever he does, he's in the darkest of the darkest. It's not the time for self-incrimination. It's a time for self-compassion. Because what happens is, you have to create light. When you're in a dark place, the sages say, you need to create light. The way to create light is by finding a good point in myself. There's going to be times where you're going to get to that. Or there's going to be times also where you're dealing with very difficult people, different spouses, children, etc. That they've also called the quits. And they've also are like a turkey underneath the table. What do you do? You tell them, look at you. What are you doing underneath the table? You look like a turkey. No, that's the time to give him chizuk by doing one thing at a time. Not, you ruined your life? What can we, let's wake up tomorrow, let's do this. It takes, it takes tremendous amount of compassion and patience. But the way you treat others is the way you treat yourself. When you're down and out, and you're completely broken, that is the time for a zamma. That means focusing on the good, focusing on the good points in you. And Ramachim says, believe it or not, when you focus on the good, what is, what is a lack of self-esteem? The opposite of a zamma. Lack of self-esteem isn't focusing on everything wrong. I'm focusing only on the wrong lack of self-esteem. So what, what am I going to do in my life when I focus on everything is wrong? I'm going to lose myself. When I need to build myself. And that's where Azama begins. Azama means I will sing with whatever I got. I will sing. I woke up in the morning today at 7 o'clock. Okay, I got this. This is going wrong. This is going wrong. Your, your job is to focus on that one thing. Azama is being overwhelmed and having no strength your job is to do one thing. Because what happens is in life, our job is not to focus on the darkness, our job is to create momentum. Because what happens with momentum, momentum takes its place. And this is one of the hardest things for people to do is to create momentum. Because they're overwhelmed with darkness. Your job at that time is to have a zamra. So when, things, when you're failing, don't focus on I'm a failure. Say, a zamra, I, I learned a lesson. Azamra means, I'm not a failure, I learned the lesson. That's how you're taking a good point out of that failure. I got screamed at by my wife. Azamra, thank you Hashem for giving me a wife, a wife that makes a tikkun for me. Azamra, instead of saying, look at this woman who's destroying my life. Azamra, thank you for the cleansing Hashem. Azamra. Not recommended, obviously. But Azamra, Azamra is extracting the good when you don't see it. Where am I going to get good here? I'm getting butchered. I'm getting yelled at by somebody, how can I see good? No, you're not going to see good. That's where you have to put your Azama light, light lessons, light, uh, Azama glasses, and start loving yourself. Because you'll never change. Remember this concept, very, very important. You will never change unless people do, do not put effort into people they don't like. Very simple. People do not put effort into people they like. The only time people start changing Changing their efforts is they have to start changing themselves. They have to start liking themselves. Because the more you like yourself, the more effort you put in yourself. But the more a person does not like himself because of lack of self-esteem, then he loses himself. And this is the root cause where you have to build momentum, not focusing on all the things you've done wrong, because you're not going to have the energy to do it. And this is what Ramachim says, Lesson 282, Azamra, is the most important lesson in life. It is the most important thing. It's something you have to go into your pocket because you're always going to have the ability to turn turmoil. Finding a Zamra in this virus is, I had more time to be, to, to be spiritual with my Creator. I had more time to spend with my family. There's two ways you can look at this thing. You can look at the chaos of it, or you could say, you know what? Thank you, Creator of the world. You gave me more time to reflect. Or thank you, Creator of the world. Now I'm not watching, now I'm not watching the media, period. I have so much more time on my hands. Azam is finding the good points, which is exactly the opposite of what this world is showing you. All the ugliness in the world. You have to do the complete opposite. Specifically with other people, and specifically with yourself. Rabbi Rush tells us very clearly that anytime you have a fight with your spouse, or anytime you don't hate, you, you don't like somebody, you have to find a way to pray to be able to look at the good points in that person. Because what happens is, is you normally balance your emotions. So when you're, when you're angry, you're going to look at all of the negatives in that person. So when you're angry specifically, you have to ask God to help you look at the good points of that person. 
And when you do that, you know what happens? You'll see the good. Whatever you focus on in life, you're going to see. So a zamra is with self-esteem. If you're trying to be a perfectionist, be a good enoughist. Focusing on the good you're doing. Don't focus on everything has to be perfect, which you're in a completely lost world. Low confidence, got to build momentum. Again, a zamra. Any kind of negative self-image, all is on If you think about the concept, people are very, they're trying to lose weight. More. What do they say? I'm fat. I'm this. I'm that. Are you, a, you have a body or are you a body? You're not a body. You have a body. So because you're talking so negative about your body, you look at the mirror and say, I'm not going to put any effort. Uh, how, how much effort this is going to be? You can say, I have a body. Let me work on my body. I'm not a body, I'm not fat, I have a body, I'm not a body. So this is where you can separate yourself from one to the two. You have to pick up momentum, that's a zombie. Number three, turning the dollar into the hay. Very, very, very beautiful. Lesson 49 of Nachman tells us that the key to your life is turning, is having Hashem's name in your life. Yud K, Vav K, correct? The last day, if it's not complete in your life, it becomes that hay becomes a dalit. It's missing light. What is the light of Hafni? So that last hay in your life in your name, that last hay in God's name, your kebab dalit. Anytime that I'm thinking negative, anytime that I'm in a very low state, that dalit becomes what's the word dal in Hebrew? Poor. So this is the root of CBT therapy. Recognizing the way you think affects your emotions. So how do you fix this? You have to change the meaning of something. When you change the meaning, you change the feeling. Nothing in the world has meaning except the meaning we give to it. But what happens is in life, when we're looking at something through a Dalit mindset, through a Dalut mindset, a light mindset of being in poverty, we're not seeing the whole picture, that hay becomes Dalit, becomes Dalut. That Dalit, what happens is, when you're in a state of Dalit, you're missing light. So what's gonna happen? You clog up your heart. Negative thoughts clog up your heart. So what you should do, is you should recognize you're in a Dalit, and how do you go back into the hay? You have to add the yod. So how, do you, how does a person turn the Dalit into the hay? Is he catches himself. Why am I thinking this way? Oh, I'm thinking this way because I gave it the wrong meaning. Change the meaning, change the feeling. You add the yud, it becomes a hey. This is a mindset, which is basically going from negative to positive thoughts, but first being aware that this is a state that you're in. It's not a permanent. This is just a state that you're in. So you can always do that all the time. When you're in a state of dali, you're not feeling good, ask yourself, why am I not feeling good? Why am I dalut? We just gave it 10 examples. Anytime I'm in a state of dali, Basically, Hashem's telling me, I gotta take some kind of action. I gotta do something. I gotta change my perspective or change my procedure. Like we said before, Dalit becomes a hey when you change the meaning. You understand? You change the meaning, meaning you add the yud, and that becomes the hey. When we, when we say the word teshuva, what is teshuva? Teshu hey. You're returning the hey. What happens when you return the hay? You return God's mercy to your life. Remember, when God's name is complete in your life, that activates blessing. But if God's name is incomplete, the blessing is also incomplete. So to the extent that your name is complete, when you have faith, what happens? The name is complete. When you lose faith, the name is incomplete. If the name complete name, incomplete vessel. So what we have to do is we have, it's more of being conscious, to be aware that I'm in a dollar mindset. I'm in a dollar mindset. Why? I had an expectation. I feel guilty. All right, I feel disappointed. Somebody let me down. I took things personal. Whatever it is, change procedure, change perspective. And then go back into the head. Because nothing in the world is whatever happens. It's whatever the meaning you give to it. You could decide to be in a dollar, or you could be, decide to be in a hay. Very, very important concept. Very, very, very important concept. Because otherwise you're walking around like a dollar and you're saying, what's going on? There's no blessing. There's no rain. There's no rain because there's no amuna. There's no amuna because God's name is not completely So it's really, these are awareness. 
This is really watching your body and watching the feelings of your body and asking yourself, why am I feeling like this? Not butchering yourself, not saying, uh, not getting, yelling at other people, displacing it. Why am I feeling like this? What is this telling me? An emotion is a signal. It's nothing bad. It's a signal that something has to be changed. You see it, you, you, what, your car. When you see a low tire, change a tire. It's not to be a stupid <laughs> tire. This is always happening to me. It's a tire. Tire's low, change a tire. You have to view your consciousness just like that. That's all it is. We get too attached. There's an attachment to this. I am this. I am that. No, I'm observing my mindfulness. I'm observing my thoughts. I'm not becoming them. What happens is, first thing, you start accumulating negativity, and then all of a sudden you start, it, so it, it affects you. Next thing you get you sick. This is what happens. Too much of accumulation of pressure. 99% of the issues today that is going on has nothing more to do with accumulation of energy. Everybody's angry at somebody else. Everybody's just displacing energy. This one's yelling at that one. It has nothing to do with him because he got yelled at by somebody else. So what does he do? He's just throwing it to somebody else. And that one's by throwing it to somebody. Look at the even, look at the political. People are getting so violent on this. And who cares? Trump is, okay. You have an opinion, I have an opinion. Wonderful. But you see the violence and putting people down and talking to you. The, the tremendous amount of negative energy people are holding. People are holding a tremendous amount of that. And what are they doing? They're just dumping it on everybody else. What happens? They can't be conscious. You can't be conscious. So that's being always the, the key to negative thinking. We're not from saying either you're in the state of the Dalut or you're state of the head. The last one that I'm going to talk about today is where you get to a point where you have, you've tried everything. You've tried everything. You've done everything. You've tried to be pos positive. You've tried to go from the Da to the hay. You tried a Zamra. You tried uh, Ma. And you just, you're knocked out completely. This is where you have to go into Bittu. Bittu is complete surrender. Complete closing your eyes. Don't think. You don't even have to think. You have to close your eyes to a much bigger picture. What happens is when a person is trying to He's tried to understand everything in life. And it is, sometimes he doesn't have the best of it. What happens is sometimes God gives us a test that we can't handle right away. Like an addiction. Like a real life crisis. It's not possible for you to handle that issue right away. Because that's really happening for your benefit. This is a great book that talks about it. The Garden of Suffering. This is the root of suffering. The only way to get rid of suffering and to get in really very, very deep pain is to go into a state of bitul. Bit, bitul means completely, completely transcendent, closing your eyes to a much bigger picture that you cannot see. And the reason why we can't, when people don't do that right away is because they're trying to figure it out. But sometimes Hashem puts you in a situation where He takes away your knowledge from you and He wants you to surrender to Him. Not for the bad, not for weakness, but because He has a much bigger plan for you. And you're not going to be able to get it on your own consciousness. That only comes to a person closing his eyes. And Rav Nassim gives us a great example. And he's saying here, just like a seed. A seed has to go into the ground to surrender itself. Once that seed surrenders itself, it becomes a tree. And this is the root of all transition between any kind of addiction. They're, they're, trying, to, they're trying to do the addiction by themselves. They can't keep on relapsing. They're trying to be positive. The requirement for them is nothing to be positive at that moment. The primary is, is to look and recognize that this addiction was a gift from God to change your identity. When you're going into Bittu, it's not to change your behavior. These are all to change your behaviors. When you're going into Bittu, when you're going into transcendent, it's to change your identity. That means your Creator has another mission for you. Has a complete another, it's like a reborn person. That I've gone into Bethel, I've gone into Bethel seven years ago, or eight years ago before I started doing this class. You have to go to a place because you're getting an identity, a complete new identity. It's not a behavior. This is already, these tools are ready when things are, when you got the identity and things are okay. But surrender is when you have something much bigger that your mind cannot comprehend. And this is why our sages tell us that when a person's getting his tooth taken out, 
He's not going to look at the dentist and say, oh, I'm in pain. There's times in life where you have to close your eyes. You cannot, you're not meant to understand it. You're not meant to. This is a concept of our when he lost his two sons. What did he do? Vayidom. Vayidom Aharon. He was quiet. He was in a state of dom. He was in a state of bitl. Or where people have gone through many, many situations in life where things make no sense. Because at the point of bitl, Rabbi Nachman saying here, this is where self-transcendent happens. It's a transcendent of a person. And all what happens is, is that person, whoever's going to try to go into bitl, is going to try. And it's going to be very hard for him because he's going to go into bitl, and then all of a sudden, the Yetzirah sees that he's going to go into bitl, and it's going to constantly fight with him to, to surrender. He wants to surrender, but his Yetzirah tells him, no, you can't surrender. What are you doing? This is what Ramachim says, that the light you're going to get, that the light you're going to get from this process of bitl is the fighting that you have to do from surrendering to reality. Surrendering to reality. And this is why, why do we have to go into Bittal? It's because Rav Nachman tells us that the amount of flow of light that you're going to get, you don't have a vessel for that light right now. And the only way to get to that light is by surrendering. And a vessel is contained, like Rav Nachman saying this very clearly. He's saying vessels for receiving God's kindness are prepared through prayer, study, Torah. But if a person gets this light without the appropriate vessel, it could actually be not good for him. Imagine a person is going through an identity change or a character change, but he's not ready. He's not ready. Yes, his character is, his, his, he wants it, but his character is not good. So what happens is, it's not going to work out. So bitl is when a person has to close his, 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 close his eyes. Just close his eyes. There's a time to be conscious. There's a time to go from Tal to the Hay. There's a time to go into Kochma. And there's a time of Nachman saying that you have to close your eyes. And Rabbi Nachman saying here, through this, in order to prepare the vessels, the first stage is to lift your eyes in the ultimate goal where everything is good. Only by surrendering yourself to Bittal and knowing, believing that everything is good, then you can reach and receive that concept. I can close my eyes when I, when I don't believe it's going to be for the good, that I'm just avoiding pain. I can only close my eyes when I know everything's for the good. And that is Bittal. Everybody's going to get to a place of Bittal in their lives. Everybody's going to get to, to these places in your lives. But the key is what to do in each situation. The worst thing you could do is hold negative energy and do nothing. And complain. It's the worst thing you could do. So either the first thing, go into Koach Ma, which basically you're taking the 26 in, putting it 45. You're giving up control. That's the root of chaos. Or you're number two, Azamo. When things are not, when you feel lack of self-esteem, overwhelmed, you start picking yourself up through a zamba, one thing at a time. Or, the, or, or number three, going from a dollar to the hay. That's being in a good state of mind, but occasionally being in a negative state of mind, knowing you're in a state of dollar. And the fourth, if you're going through a complete, complete, complete identity change, it's not none of these tools, it's the tool, where a person closes his eyes to a much bigger picture. So Meshem help us all, that we should all take these tools and apply it to whatever areas of are right?